Uh, if they can do this to me, they can do this to you. Remember, three years ago, the FBI raided my apartment and my law office, and they investigated me for two and a half years. 20 years of my life they investigated, and they wrote a letter to the grand jury that they couldn't find a single crime. So that should have pretty much cleared me out, don't you think? Except for this ridiculous uh, case in which I'm being prosecutor for right, defending an American citizen who uh, I do as a lawyer and uh, five other lawyers are indicted. That should tell you right away that this is a an assault on our Constitution. Uh, F uh, Fannie Willis will go down in American history as having conducted one of the worst attacks on the American Constitution ever when this case is dismissed. She has uh, violated uh, people's First Amendment right to advocate uh, the government, to petition the government for grievances, like an election they believe was poorly conducted or falsely conducted. People have a right to believe that in America. Uh, Biden and the Biden state doesn't have a right to tell you what the truth is. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, I will, I will, I will tell you, if you need to know what this is all about, the FBI stole my iCloud account. And you know when they went and stole it? The day that I began representing Donald Trump four years ago. Mr. The day after I represented Trump. Mr. Mayor, you so have for, all, for all that time, the federal be government be careful, be careful. Nobody was lying on Donald Trump and his lawyer. I am being indicted because I'm a lawyer, as is Mr. Mayor, last month, Mr. Mayor, last month, you, hey, Mr. Mayor, right here, Mr. Mayor, you effectively last month. Mr. Mayor, will you be here tomorrow? When oh, by the way, you're wrong. I didn't do that. I entered into a stipulation for the purposes of that case to move on. I specifically says I do not in any way admit the truth of those allegations. Those allegations are totally false. You did not contest that you made fraudulent claims about the 2020 election, though, Mr. Mayor. You're totally wrong and you're lying, as you often do. If you read it, it says it was only for the purposes of that case and it was not an admission. You had the opportunity to refute it, though, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, do you acknowledge that you made false statements? That is a total you, lie. Why don't you go put yourself you, somewhere But you now. acknowledged it. Why did you I not did fight not that in the court? I acknowledge it. That was a stipulation that's done in every lawsuit, not for the purposes of truth. You did not, law that you did not contest now, it. You had the opportunity that. to fight that. Wrong. Well, I did not because I had to move on to legal issues. Now, let me take another question. You did not deny that you made false statements. Will, statements. will you be here tomorrow? I will not be here uh, tomorrow. Right. I talked to the president today. I wish him well. I have every confidence in him. What they are doing to him is an assault on the American Constitution. And I say to the American citizens, this could guys, happen guys, to you. Guys, you've got to stop now. You have made false statements, sir. Tell us, uh, tell us what that was like. Right. I think that Lisa just outlined it well, and that's why the reason why they wanted to get that direct question to him was because literally just a month ago there, he uh, he did not contest the fact that he made false statements there. And as you heard him say very dismissively to move on were his words from that and saying that he wanted to get past, acknowledging, get past essentially the legal end of this and the, uh, the funds that uh, multiple cases in front of him would ultimately take up here. I just want to let Randy kind of show you the scene here that we're looking at's become a little bit more as these days of uh, as these days have gone on here Katie but Rudy Giuliani is just this interesting character in it because the attorney or I should say the district attorney Fonnie Willis directly uh, alleges in her indictment that he knowingly made false statements yes there are the phone calls to folks in Michigan Pennsylvania here in Georgia but she very explicitly in her indictment says that Rudy Giuliani knowingly made false statements and so for Rudy Giuliani looking at these uh, potential charges that's why we wanted to get that question to him uh, and yet as you just heard him there very dismissive about the own filing that was made on his behalf
half. Uh, to note, Rudy Giuliani, we just became familiar with who his two lawyers were this morning, Katie. I know the conversations were going late into last night uh, with potential counsel. I also want to note that I had the chance when they left the uh, district attorney's office earlier this afternoon to ask both men who are now representing him whether they intend to stick on. And John Esposito, as counsel from New York, said that he will stay with him through the trial. Uh, his Georgia counsel, which he needs Georgia counsel in order to go to trial here, uh, told me that he was not yet ready to make that commitment. So for Rudy Giuliani, there is a lot involved here, $150,000 bond. And as Lisa and you were just uh, pointing out here, he was also named as a co-conspirator in the Jack Smith indictment, and potential charges could loom there. This could get expensive. And for Rudy Giuliani, uh, this is increasingly a difficult legal situation His that the one-time prosecutor Georgia finds representative, do we know that the issue is, is a financial one? Is that why he can't yet confirm that he'll stay on? Uh, I wish I had the answer for you, Katie. Uh, we're, we're trying to build a relationship with these folks in real time. This was counsel that we just found out about this morning. Uh, we know that his New York counsel went and met up with him at his local office here uh, before Giuliani ultimately came in here and surrendered. So it's a good, outstanding question. Ron, uh, what we'll about the Rudy Giuliani's to. relationship with Donald Trump? Do they speak anymore? Right. Uh, if folks were around a few minutes ago, you all met a, a guy named Ted who works as his political advisor. Uh, and it has been suggested uh, defiantly to me that uh, Trump and Rudy Giuliani maintain a close relationship and that they still speak often. Uh, for Rudy Giuliani, this is a relationship that led him down to Mar-a-Lago in April. Uh, we do not know the uh, exact specifics of that meeting here, but it's known that Rudy Giuliani has not been paid uh, for the legal work dating back to 2020. Uh, Rudy Giuliani uh, has a, a podcast that is filmed that he goes uh, on the internet with on a nightly basis. And for folks that thought that maybe Rudy Giuliani would flip along the way, I'm not ruling that out. But for anybody that would sit and listen to that hour to hour and a half long nightly podcast, it would become clear to you that Rudy Giuliani is as defiant as he was in November and December of 2020. He is somebody who continues to propagate the very conspiracy theories that led him to these criminal charges. And for Donald Trump, well, there may no be financial stipend for his continued uh, echoing of his own election fraud claims. He very much uh, has a loyal defender in the one-time mayor and longtime very good friend and fellow New Yorker in Rudy Giuliani.